Welcome to this meeting of Planning and Development Committee. Please note that this meeting is being filmed for live or subsequent broadcast via the Borough Council's website on the internet. The images and sound recordings may be used for training purposes by the Council. Generally, the public gallery is not filmed. However, by entering the Council Chamber and using the public seating area, you are consenting to be filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recording for webcasting and or training purposes. If you have any queries regarding this, please contact the monitoring officer. Uh, I have some apologies, uh, Councillor Hazelinski, Councillor Phil Kershaw, Councillor Trumper. Are there any other apologies? No? That's fine then. Uh, any declarations of interest? No? Members are reminded of the need to consider whether they have a disclosable, pecuniary, prejudicial or other personal interest to declare in any item on this agenda. Details of any interest must be declared at the start of the meeting or as soon as any interest becomes apparent during the meeting. We shall go on to the minutes now. Uh, can somebody propose them as a true record of Councillor Swires? and seconded by Jane Mortimer. Can I have a show of hands uh, for the minutes, please? Right. Uh, any against? Any abstentions? Three. Minutes are passed. I will now sign them and pass them On to the first item on the. Uh, is there any public question time? None. None. We'll go on to agenda item four planning application uh, land to the south of Limestone Road, Burniston. Planning officer Ms. Cornforth will present. Thank you. With all matters reserved except for access. In terms of updates following the publication of the report, members should note that an outline application for four dwellings on the adjoining site, which I'll outline here, known as 31 Limestone Road, has been validated, but this has no bearing on the application today. The site is rectangular in shape that I've labelled it totals 1.65 hectares in area and comprises of agricultural grazing land. There are a small number of sheds on the northwest boundary, relatively central to the site. The topography falls gently from south to north as you go down Limestone Road towards the village. And here you can see the context of the site in terms of its proximity to Lindhead Primary School and the A171. So this application is in outline form and seeks to establish the principle of using the land in question for housing and taking access from Limestone Road. All other matters, appearance, landscaping, layout and scale are for later consideration at the reserve matters stage. So this is taken from the local plan proposals map and here members can see the site is allocated for housing as HA 35. Access to the site is proposed to be taken from Limestone Road. It will be positioned relatively central on the northwest boundary. The current field access is slightly further down Limestone Road. Consent is not sought for a detailed highway design within the site at this stage, but is sought for the principle of taking access at this point along Limestone Road. And this meets the requirement of the allocation statement. This is an indicative site plan and shows how the site could be developed with housing, gardens, internal road, roads, on-site public open space that is separate from the Suds Basin. There is an opportunity at this stage to set parameters for development where it is considered necessary. So given the character of the development in the area is predominantly single and two-storey dwellings, 
Should members be minded to approve the application, officers advise a condition be added to the consent restricting the scale of development to two storey only. As taller development would be unduly conspicuous in the landscape as you approach the village from the south. I'll now move on to some photographs of the site. So here I'm stood within the site looking southwest towards the open countryside. This is the northwest boundary of the site where I explained at the start an outline planning application for four dwellings has been submitted. You can see the existing bungalow here, uh, garage here, sorry, with the bungalow in the background. Here you can see the existing buildings on the site on the northwest boundary onto Limestone Road. As well, you can appreciate there's um, single storey development and, and two storey development. This is looking back northeast towards Limestone Road and the village beyond. And here I'm stood outside the Harmony Church entrance at the top of Limestone Road. That's still within the village, but looking towards the site, which you can't actually see at this point because of the topography of the adjacent field. So this is obviously on higher land with the application site further down Limestone Road. This is the existing access point with the new access point almost to the to the right here as you look at the photo. And again, I'm stood looking up Limestone Road from the northernmost point of the site closest to the village. So as the report concludes, it is considered the development can be accommodated in this location as it is an allocated site for housing within the local plan. There is a safe access point off Limestone Road that the local highway authority have raised no objection to. Consideration of scale, layout, appearance and landscaping will be considered at the reserve matters stage. There are no objections from statutory consultees regarding the principle of disposing foul and surface water into the existing sewer network. The existing overflow routes can be maintained as part of the overall development layout at the reserve matters stage. The application is therefore recommended for approval, subject to the conditions outlined at the end of the report and the completion of a section 106 agreement. This agreement would secure on-site affordable housing and public open space contributions in line with the respective supplementary planning documents together with a primary health care contribution. If what I have explained above is not met, officers wish to seek delegated authority from members to refuse the application on the grounds that no legal agreement is in place and the proposal therefore would fail to deliver on-site affordable housing, public open space and health care provision in accordance with the local plan and relevant supplementary planning documents. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, we have a public speaker, Matthew Mortensen, as the agent for the applicant. You have three minutes to speak. Uh, when there's one minute left, there will, you will be informed there's one minute to go on. Could you bring your comments to a conclusion when the three minutes is up? Thank you. You may begin whenever you want the time to speak in support of this application. My name is Matthew Mortensen, and I'm Associate Director of 1947 Limited Chartered Town Planners and Urban Designers. As your officer's report explains, this is an application for outline planning permission for up to 46 dwellings with all matters reserved apart from details of the means of accessing to the site. The application was submitted following productive pre-application discussions with your officers with their comments and those of statutory consultees helping to inform the, sub the submission before you. Given the site is allocated in your adopted local plan, the principle of residential development is considered to be acceptable. Whilst the application is accompanied by an illustrative master plan to demonstrate how the site could be developed, the precise number of dwellings and details of the scheme's layout, scale, appearance and landscaping will be addressed at the reserve matter stage. The application includes a design of the proposed junction layout, which will serve as the principal means of accessing the site off Limestone Road this being acceptable to a local highway authority. Further, pedestrian and cycle linkages to, to Limestone Road are possible, though will be sub subject of the subsequent application for reserve matters consent. 
The site is located within Flood Zone 1 and therefore has a low risk of flooding, and recent discussions with Yorkshire Water and the Leeds Local Flood Authority have demonstrated that the site can be drained in principle. This being achieved by an attenuation basin that will link into the existing sewer network. The development is considered to be acceptable in all other technical respects, including in terms of land contamination and impacts on trees and hedges, social infrastructure and residential amenity. The application has also been accepted as appropriate for inclusion in Natural, England, Natural England's district level licensing scheme in respect of Great Crested Newts. The benefits of the development are wide ranging and, other than the delivery of housing to help meet the Council's targets, a Section 106 agreement will secure the delivery of policy compliant plan and gain in the form of 30% affordable housing and contributions towards off site green space and health infrastructure. In conclusion, it is clear that the application accords with both local and national planning policy and represents a sustainable form of development. It is therefore respectfully requested that you resolve to grant outline planning permission in line with your officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll go on to questions uh, first, if anybody has any questions. There's just one thing I would like to ask before. It's been mentioned 46 houses. That's indicative. It's not a maximum or a minimum, because I know when we've had this before, there's been some confusion about attributing a number to the thing, uh, to any development, and it's caused some concern. So we're about to establish this. Can we just have exactly what that 46 means? Yeah, thank you, Chair. So 46 at this stage is indicative, and if mem just point members to condition 8... I'll just read it for ease. It says, notwithstanding the development description, the outline planning permission hereby granted does not give approval to a specific number of dwellings, nor a maximum or minimum number of dwellings. As you say, the issues of layout, scale, sizes, etc., of dwellings would be considered at the reserve matters stage. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Bill Chat, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. It's maybe my ears, Chair. I do apologise. Would you like to put your microphone please. sorry um i heard the officer say that it, uh, permission was to be refused refused now that was at the end i said if if members weren't we would as officers seek delegated approval to refuse the application if the section 106 is not completed thank you yeah any other questions uh councillor sam cross Thank you, Chair. Really, um... oh dear. Uh, the question is, um, oh, well, a couple of things. I, I read through the um, 25 documents there, and it, we've got whether they object or support. Uh, Mrs. Amos, if you open the doc document that says supports it, absolutely objects to it. Uh, on uh, the 25 documents uh, rather strongly uh, and just following on from our last meeting um, if we are going to grant permission we discussed about properties having reasonable sized bedrooms and reasonable sized rooms rather than and everybody's nodding away the minimum uh, and that we don't have any more substandard housing and it really, it's passing it on to the officers that the properties should not be built to the minimum size, they should be built to the recommended size as planning matters. Uh, if we're going to grant permission uh, and leave it to the officers, we, I want it firmly noted that they are to the standard size, not to the minimum. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, reserved matters, but would you like to comment? Yeah, thank you, Chair. So through the Section 106 agreement, that has to be in terms of the percentage of affordable housing, so it would meet the 30%, and it also has to meet the other criteria within our affordable housing SPD, which would also cover the like numbers of bedrooms, the mix in terms of the tenures, as well as the nationally described space standards. Um, so that would almost, you know, be able to secure that. And ultimately, it will be up to the, the developer in terms of if they want to pursue, you know, having larger houses. But we would ensure they would meet the nationally described space standards. 
can we actually enforce that now? Because I'm not sure whether we've not been able to do it in the past. Mr. Walker. Yeah, just, just to clarify, what we're saying is, as, 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 as we've sort of discussed in previous cases, our affordable housing SPD gives us the latitude to require afford the affordable housing element to meet the nationally described space standards unless a registered provider is willing to accept smaller ones, which unfortunately we've seen in the past. In terms of the open market provision, again, as previously discussed, we don't have the policy mechanism to require it, but what I would say is clearly the agent for the, the applicant is here and listening, and you know, that, that message about members' expectations and aspirations you know, can be heard and hopefully feed into the reserve matters application in due course. Councillor Cross, did you want to come back? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. I think we should get it right. If it's not going to be the national standard, that it actually comes back to the committee and the committee can look at it again and decide. Yeah, I mean, just, just for the avoidance of doubt, the reserve matters would come back to committee in, in any event. The decision today would establish the principle, but clearly the, the, the deal of execution of any outline permission will be back for, for, for committee's consideration in due course. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Mike Cockrell. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, a couple of things. I've been concerned over the last couple of years about the number of times an application comes in in excess of the allocation of dwellings in the local plan. This is one that goes over that. It says 40 in the local plan, it's saying 46. I think it's time we started sticking to the local plan. Yes. The other thing is, uh, is about the uh, affordable homes. And again, I'm sure this will, needs to come up at reserve matters. I appreciate that, but this is an opportunity to send a, a strong message to the applicants. At the moment, it seems to be saying, you know, circa 30% for affordable homes on site. But how often have we had, oh, when it comes to reserve matters, we'll give you some money and you can have it off site. We need to send the message out. This is on site, off site would not be acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walker? Yes, um, to, 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 to address the second point, uh, yeah, the expectation would be provision would be on site for a, a development of this scale. Um, uh, and, and, and certainly we would be seeking the full, for the full 30% um, uh, uh, in line with policy. Um, in terms of the uh, yield of the site, again, as, 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 as we've touched on in, in, in previous debates, um, the local plan the, the, the figures within the local plan ascribed to individual sites are indicative, they are estimates. They were basically to uh, inform the overall scale that was expected to be delivered by the local plan and inevitably when it comes to the detailed delivery there is deviation, some higher, some lower. In this instance the decision before you doesn't establish a kind of, uh, you know, a figure either way. Again, it would be open to committee to look at the... It, it, if outline permission were granted, they could judge a reserve matters application in due course and assess whether there are, they feel there are uh, too many units or, or, or too few at that point. So again, just to make it clear, that, that, that figure in the local plan is, is, I would advise, there's nothing we could, um, we, I wouldn't base any refusal of, of planning permission on that figure being either exceeded or subsidized. It's got to be based upon an assessment of the actual uh, detailed application before you. Councillor Cockrell, did you want to come back? Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, I, I fully accept that. It's indicative. But we've seen instances where when it's come to the actual planning that those figures have been doubled. And I think I just need to send that message out. We need to put f you know, some firm fingers down. Thank you. Given that the applicant has suggested 46 as the indicative, can we actually say at this stage that it will not exceed any figure or is that going beyond our ability to state it? I think, I, I think given we've really only got very, you know, uh, very rough mm -hmm. potential layouts, I, don't, I, I would suggest there's perhaps not really the information to be able to ascertain, yes, you know, 46 would be too many or too few. Yeah. Uh, as I say, it is open to committee when reserve matters come in to really assess the execution of a, of a development in detail and make that decision then as i say we've 
g given the, 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 the plans we've got, are just really to give a feel for how things would be distributed. I think we've not really got yeah. the, 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 the mechanism to say a particular figure is the, the absolute limit. So given we have the applicant here, we can state quite publicly that if you don't meet minimum space requirements and you exceed this figure, we would likely want to do something about it, if that's as fair enough as we can well, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they've heard that. Uh, Councillor John Nock. Thank you, Chairman. It, it, it does seem to me that this is uh, a significant overdevelopment of, uh, of a village which does not actually have the infrastructure to accommodate it. And I would like some indication, if it's available, as to where the residents who are going to live in, in, in these houses currently live and what are they going to do for a living when they get there. Thank you, Chairman. Like to answer that? Yeah, a bit um, difficult, but I, you can I, try. I, obviously, I can't, I can't really answer where, where specific residents will come from. I guess, to go back to first principles, this is an allocated site within your local plan. So the local plan establishes the principle of res residential development here. So um, that is, uh, uh, my advice would be that is a, a given really. And the decision before you is purely, if you like, establishing that principle of residential development and the means of access. Um, to, I guess to give, to give some comfort in terms of um, sort of affordable housing units, the kind of, the 30 per cent we'd hoped to achieve if and when this development was, 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 was realised. We've done a, some recent research up in Whitby suggested that it was, it was either slightly above or slightly below 99 per cent of affordable units had, were occupied by people who had come from a Whitby, if you like, postcode, you know, either in a property. That, so I guess what we'd say is when it comes to a the affordable housing element, there's, there's a very strong likelihood it comes from people from a, with, a, with a connection to that immediate and perhaps slightly wider locality. But in terms of the open market housing, that will as ever be a mix of you know, perhaps people moving to the area, people moving from you know, within the area and you know, beyond that, I couldn't, I couldn't give any accurate information. Mr. Uh, I, I'm, <clears throat> I do appreciate, of course, everything that you say. Um, I'm just trying to uh, preserve my, my place in the awkward squad for, <laughs> for the future. Thank you, Chairman. Can you tell us about the seven increase in the borough and housing strategy? It doesn't really indicate where the intersection is. It's helping for that question. I don't think. No, but it might explain to them that they're not always coming from outside. Something's happening yeah. inside. Well, thank you. So can I tell you? Yeah, just one thing to bear in mind. I think the presumption always is that somehow we've got huge numbers of people coming into the borough from outside the area. And I think we've had thousands of houses built over the last decade. And early information coming from the most recent census is that our population has grown by seven individuals. So obviously something is taking place within our borough as to the way people live, the way they want to live, and the amount of ha space they require, and how they wish to, how the family is changing, and I think we shouldn't always assume that people will be coming from somewhere outside. Yes, Mr. Knott, <laughs> Councillor Knott. Yeah, yeah. Um, if the population has only risen by seven percent. No, seven people. Seven Not people. Not seven percent. Seven, seven people. individuals. Where are all the empty homes then? Yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I would stress at the moment all we have is very high level figures in terms of the, the, the new sense and there's clearly going to have to be a lot of assessment of subsequent tranches of information that comes out. What we have seen though is the um, that ageing demographic continues to be a trend and what that means is that segment of the, of, of the population inevitably has much smaller household size. So uh, uh, in, in, in kind of general terms, I guess to give a flavor, back in sort of the, the 70s, average household size was something in the region of kind of 3.8 people. Now it's dipped below two. So effectively you need much more dwellings just to accommodate the same number of people because of that, you know, people living longer, perhaps more divorced, but equally, 
you know, more single households, more smaller households re re reflecting that demography. So kind of, that's, that, as I say, there'll be a lot more work done to interrogate the information that comes out at the, at the local level, but it kind of, it does suggest there's that, that trend is continuing of, sm you know, smaller household size. So effectively to, to stand still, there's more, there's more, more development needed to accommodate those people. But I, I would suggest that's a discussion for another date in, as we look to refine planning policy and assess things thereafter. I think perhaps uh, when you have more information, it'd be good for us to actually be uh, given a briefing on that, and then we can go deeper into those figures. It's not appropriate at this moment in time with this uh, particular thing. Did you want to say something else? Only that I, I, I respect your comment, David. This is a discussion for another day, so I, I won't pursue it further this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Richmore. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, my question is, if, if we're going to look in at 46 new homes on, on HA35, possibly two cars per home, and there's another plan application, I can see similar size HA34, possibly the same, I have no idea. The levels of infrastructure we always go on about, but what, what is going to be put in place at the end of Limestone Road as it touches the A171 when kids are being dropped off at school and so on and people are going to work? Are we making provision with highways into looking at how that junction will operate? Would you like to answer that? Again, in, in terms of the, the kind of pattern of development and particular sites that were allocated within the local plan, they were done with kind of full involvement and engagement with the highways authority. And there were instances where key junctions were identified as needing investment, which is why you've seen those three or four junctions kind of around Scarborough in recent years be, being developed. In this instance, um, there's no, the, the, the highways authority hasn't identified the need for any specific investment in junctions nearby. They're, they're satisfied that the, the quantum of development you know, proposed in that part of Burniston can be accommodated within the infrastructure, um, you know, effectively the road infrastructure connecting the, uh, connecting to the A171 and beyond. So, yeah, they've, they, 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 ultimately they're satisfied with, with I guess for today's meeting, with this application before us, but equally that bigger picture within the plan. Councillor Paul Riley. Uh, yeah, just looking at the um, schematic plan, um, the majority of these houses are going to be accessed by the access road, but um, I think around sort of 10 or 12 of them will be accessed directly off Limestone Road, won't they? Um, and that, I just noticed that's, that's where the majority of the sort of wildlife hedges and some, some mature trees. I mean, is there any sort of provision? I pre presume it's a, it's a reserve matters thing, but will there be provision at, at that stage to protect some of this biodiversity? Bio, bio Limit the like to answer that? amount of destruction. Yeah, I, thank you, Chair. Again, at this stage, we're just considering the principle of having the main access into the site off Limestone Road. So, in terms of thinking about, you know, the boundary hedgerows or the positioning of the houses, driveways, etc., that would all be considered at the reserve matters um, stage. Thank you. If there's nobody else who wishes to speak or discuss, would somebody like to move something? Councillor Jane Mortimer. Um, thank you. I'm pleased there's somebody here that's been listening to what our concerns are for the, hang on, for the future. Um, something's gone wrong with this lot. It's lovely to have these, but they're whistling back at people. Um, yeah. It is part of our housing allocation. It has been there. And I think it's something that we do need to bring up when it's reserve matters. Uh, but under that... Um, we're going to get the 30% affordable, which is essential. So I'd be happy to move this, and then we can debate the hedgerows, which are mentioned in the, pla in the papers, uh, and everything else that we've discussed today can be sorted out then. So I'll, I'll move the um, agenda item, please. Thank you. Would anybody like to second that? Councillor Stuart Campbell. We have a mover and a seconder. Can we move to a vote? All those for the motion. Oh, before we go, could you like to state the motion? Thank you, Chair. So the, the motion is as set out in the report that permission be granted uh, subject to completion of the Section 106 agreement. 
All those for the motion, please raise your hand. Yeah. Anybody against? One against. Uh, any abstentions? No. Would you like to clarify the motion? Thank you, Chair. So for item four, the resolution of committee is that planning permission be granted, subject to the one agreement being secured, one or six agreement being secured. Thank you. We move now to agenda item five, land to the north of Eastfield for Middle Deepdale Development North World. Uh, Mr. Smith will present the item. Thank you. He's pretty familiar with this plan that I've got in front of me, um, which is the original master plan for um, Middle Deepdale as approved under outline planning permission. Uh, the development is is subdivided into two uh, broad areas. There's HA1 on the western side, to the west of the Deepdale Valley, which bisects the site, and then HA2 um, on the right east and eastern side of the valley. And this application is for part of the site, so it is in this area here, um, it is a reserve matters application and to a large extent would uh, supersede a previous uh, application. Both applications, but the one which uh, has uh, reserve matters and this current proposal is for housing for residents of 55 years or older. So basically, it, in, it, looking at the different phases uh, set out in, in the original outline, uh, permission for HA2. It is, this is, it covers the majority of phase five, as shown there. And then this shows the, some of the underlying principles attached to the original outline application. So again, it's, it's this area, residential in here. There's open space to the south, uh, and obviously the uh, Deepdale Valley to the west. And then, and then to the east is the a school, the school uh, which has been recently opened last September and actually I'll just go back so and then the other just to, to put it in context you'll see that there's the link road which it, uh, extends a proposed across the entirety of the site which is the recent application relating to the bridge if you look at where this the northern curve on HA2 is on the next slide um, it, this, this is an extract from the local plan and shows um, the northerly expansion of Middle Deepdale, and most notably HA8, which, which there has been a pr an application within the last year which has been presented to committee. But that's more just context rather than being directly relevant to this specific scheme. So, yes, so just take, to, to take some photo, photos of the site. Um, these show uh, of the phase five area and Basically, you can see it's an open uh, tracts of land, um, not minimal vegetation. Uh, this, fir the first photo on the left hand shows, so it sh is taken from the northern part of the site down along the eastern boundary. You can see the edge of the fence of the s school playing fields on the uh, left hand side here, and then the, there are the houses on more established parts of Eastfield at North World Road extend across there along the southern boundary. And then the next photo is taken from a similar position but looks in a more southwesterly direction. So there are the houses and then then towards the, although it's not visible here, the valley is in approximately that, that position there. The next photo, this photo here, and this is taken from the western end. So it's basically uh, shortly above point where the valley dips away and you can see in the f distance there's the, there's the single score story school building there and then some other houses on HA2 and then the final photo is looking from the site uh, westwards towards 
um, where HA1 will be developed. It's quite difficult to see, but there are some houses there. But then there is this area of lighter uh, land is, is part of that uh, allocation. And you can also see um, part of the cliff face on the uh, Deepdale Valley there. So that's looking from the, from the uh, western edge of the pro proposed site. So this, this next slide, this shows the previously approved layout uh, on the site. Uh, so um, basically, it, it included, again, it was for accommodation for the el elderly, but it included a, perhaps a greater preponderance of two-storey and, uh, and, and also some three-storey apartment blocks. The, it, the current application does not include this northern corner, which included an 18-storey, 18, 18 not 18-storey, sorry, three-storey, 18-unit uh, apartment block uh, and a community hub. So th those, those proposals don't form part of the current proposal, but they could still be developed under that earlier permission. What this application does replace is, is the, the remainder of the residential layout. It, it, when we come on to it, it has certain similarities uh, in terms of the layout, but I suppose one difference is, is that there, this showed two cul-de-sacs on the southern side, and they would be link, link, linked now, uh, and also the, 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 the pro previous proposals um, face towards the valley, and also there was an apartment block in, the, in this corner, which is now be, being improved. So moving on to the current actual proposals that we're considering today, so again, it's the same uh, site minus this area, uh, which, as I mentioned, can still be developed under uh, the previous planning permission. The scheme, as mentioned in the report, includes a higher preponderance of bungalows, but still with some dormers, dormers and uh, uh, two-storey properties. Uh, differences. Uh, are that there is now actually a circular route within the site, albeit with a barrier here to prevent vehicles uh, uh, going through, but that, that allows pedestrians or cyclists to go through. There are links down to the open space at the southern edge of the site. Um, so basically, develop, cars will come off the, the boulevard at the northern end, and then, and then there are the, the two routes. During the course of the application, we did seek various amendments because I think it was felt that the, it didn't fully comply with our, our design guidance in certain respects. So, uh, for example, on this southern route, the, the how or the bungalows largely faced sideways onto the road. That's, they've now been reoriented, so they face the road. And, and I think that there have been a number of other amendments set out in the report uh, and, and, and uh, these also cover some of the concerns uh, raised by the designing out crime officer. Uh, so, for example, where there was a lack of surveillance on, 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 that, on that route, uh, we've also, as I say, secured an extra route down to the open space. Sorry. Yes. It's not particularly clear, but this what this plan shows is the drainage layout, and basically the site gradually slopes uh, westwards towards the valley, and so it, the surface water will drain into a large underground attenuation tank just beyond the site uh, on, on the uh, top of the valley slopes. These next couple of plans they show typical. Um, street scene elevation. So you can, again, you can see the majority of the properties are bungalows, but there are some, it, it, they are interspersed with two-storey and uh, some dormers. And we, we did, as part of the uh, discussions with the applicants, we did uh, ensure that there was a, perhaps a greater mix of uh, properties to, to, make, to make sure there's a greater variety within the street scenes. And, I, and then again, these are, these are, these are some of the other uh, street scenes. 
So just quickly going through the actual individual house types, on, on each of these next slides, and I'll go through them quickly, uh, the large image is of the front elevation of some of the house types, and then on the right-hand side, the rear and side elevations and the floor plans below. So the first three quite similar type uh, house types or bung bungalow types to be, to be more specific. And you can see that, that there's been some very, very variety of materials used to to help uh, increase uh, the distinctiveness. Uh, the, these, bung these detached bungalows are characteristic of the southern boundary where they face towards the open space uh, opposite the rear of houses on North Wald Road. Uh, these are the dormer bung bungalows I mentioned. They, there are t four, uh, uh, there are two apartment blocks uh, each comprising four dwellings of two story in height uh, shown so that, that and of a slightly more contemporary site so there's so the two of the blocks within the development as a whole and then there are also a, um, a, a number of two story dwellings all the two story and door building bungalows do incorporate lifts so um, basically in term, term that covers the slides and in terms of the um, Report. I think that just the one point I have to u update is that uh, uh, an ecological fences for hedgehogs, uh, bat boxes, and bird boxes. So uh, that that point has now been addressed. The recommendation is that this uh, reserve matters application is approved, subject to the conditions set out in the report. In certain instances, instances, the wording just needs to be slightly expanded from the summaries in the report. Uh, and in addition, there would be an extra condi condition to ensure that the uh, biodiversity measures, as I mentioned, uh, are, in, are implemented as part of the development. Thank you. Thank you. We have a public speaker, Theresa Snaith, who is the agent for the development. You have three minutes to address the committee. When there's one minute left, uh, Asan, you will hear an audible hearing to tell you there's one minute left. When three minutes have passed, please bring your uh, stop speaking. You can begin when you're ready, and the clock will start from when you start speaking. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chair, for allowing me to uh, speak in behalf of the uh, development. Um, my name's Theresa Snaith. I'm the Business Development Director for Lovell Later Living. Uh, we're a wholly uh, subsidiary company of Lovell Partnerships Limited, and we're committed to developing high-quality, lifelong homes um, with our customers' later life in mind. Our homes are challenging the status quo relating to style, choice and affordability traditionally seen in the UK for older persons' housing. Many years of research and development have driven this proposition, engaging with older people and listening to what they say they require and their aspirations for later life. Personally, I've worked in older person services for 30 years and I'm excited to be bringing uh, the first of hopefully many developments to Scarborough, building on our uh, long-time relationship with the borough and with North Yorkshire County Council. Uh, with Kebble, we plan to build many more of these type of um, homes across the borough uh, over the coming years. We recognise the importance of creating places to provide an environment for people to live and age well within their own communities. In homes that are suited to their needs, uh, both now and as their needs change in the future. The development will see 84 specially designed homes for occupation by people over the age of 55, delivered in eight different living styles, providing choice of both lifestyle and budget to people in later life. Homes with discrete enabling infrastructure built into the fabric from day one, which will provide peace of mind that no matter what life brings in the future, people are able to age in their own home that will not fail them. The homes have been plotted to create an accessible and interactive community. Whilst not being a gated community, the highway layout promotes a slow pace of movement, 
good surveillance, sensitively designed, whilst offering private space to relax with family, friends, and hopefully enjoy a spot of gardening. The public consultation that we held in the spring attracted a lot of interest from local people living both in Scarborough and um, in Middle Deepdale and Eastfield. Also, the Town Council were very excited by the opportunity this will bring to the local investment um, to the area. The development will provide much needed, flexible and adaptable time? accommodation catering for an ageing population. Yes. Sorry, that's your three minutes. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll now open this up to members' questions. Any questions from anybody? Uh, Councillor Robertus Wyers. Really, uh, not really a question, Chairman. It's just uh, in the offices designing out, the police have recommended that where there isn't a garage, they should perhaps have some cycle storage. Um, but I, I think this is much needed. This is the best thing that could he be here. It will accommodate so many people. I think it's an excellent idea for people of that age group. Um, I think it really will. It's finishing this, this area off completely, but it's complementing everything so that people can live there right through their lives. You know, a lot of people in this area have lived there all their lives, and I would imagine they're going to be moving from a house to a smaller property that would be more in keeping with what they need. So I would move the recommendation. Could you refer to the cycle storage? Is there any provision for a cycle storage? Um, not, not as such, no, but I mean, each of the properties does have a side, like access to the side around. So I mean, I think, I think it's, it's, it, 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 if, if householders wish to provide that um, storage, that is, that is, you know, it is something that can be provided. It's not, it's not precluded, certainly. Councillor Bill Chan. Yeah, a couple of questions. Um, the, the legislation now exists that all properties, new properties, will have a EV charging point attached anywhere, won't they? So we needn't worry about that. That's going to be there naturally. All right. The second one is how can we guarantee over 55s only? I mean, you know, the, I'm not being funny, but age is just a number now. I mean, you could have somebody who's 55 uh, but got a much younger wife or a much younger husband moving into that accommodation, which would then facilitate the possibility of having children in there and the needs to have the facilities to cover for children. So we can't just say it's exclusive, we've got to be inclusive. And being inclusive, we've got to say that even at 55, children might, or people might still have children. Uh, I look at some of our actors and I think to myself, David Jason was a father at 78. So it still is possible. And where, where are the facilities? Yes. Yeah, so thank you. Um, yeah, condition two, uh, what it says, each residential dwelling of the development shall be occupied by, only by persons aged 55 or over or, and by persons uh, living as part of a single household or, or persons, sorry, it's a lot of, it's quite a bit of wording there which repeats itself, uh, by a single household. So basically, um, so it, it, it does allow some flexibility. Um, certainly, uh, and then it, well, it was it just it, then also it allows for a, a, if if a, in, in the event that a person complying uh, uh, dies, then that that the the, 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 the kind of uh, de dependents or partner can can still occupy the property. So it does get, provide some flexibility. Um, I have to admit, it's, it's probably it's, it's more of a it, it, we, we'd be if. It, it's perhaps not one of those conditions which is the most straightforward to enforce, but I think certainly, I think what I would also say is it, it was a condition which the applicants themselves were keen to be put on, so it's to, to provide the clarity as to how how the house would be, you know, these houses which are and bungalows which are specially adapted would be um, occupied by the client base as intended. Just for clarification on that, the enforcement of this particular uh, element of this development, is that something which the Borough Council is obliged to enforce, or is it something that 
the management company of the whole area, it's their obligation. Whose obligation would it be? I think probably in practice it would be a, a combination of the both, of the both, because obviously then there would be ongoing. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't speak for the com company, but I imagine as, as a company they want that it is to be marketed as a 55 plus development. So it's, it's in their interests that that's, that is maintained. Yes, we, but there is a condition as well that we, we, we um, mm. if there were, yeah, I think, I think it's one where if there were a complaint, we, we would, we would mm. investigate it, but it's probably not something that's, that's yeah, we, we would actively be monitoring. Councillor Chair? Yeah, I'm, I'm still quite concerned um, because the reality is that what you're telling me now is as long as one partner is at 55 when they move in, then that is an acceptable situation. Um, things happen, people die. What happens if a younger person then becomes the property owner? What happens if the issue then becomes the fact that they want to go to the open market? We do have similar projects around the town with the uh, Round Trees Trust and whatever, but they're tied into selling back to Round Trees. Do we have a similar situation here, or is this just a fly by night? It all works well this week, but then next week somebody's saying, Well, I own the house, I can live in it. Well, I, th I think I think what you know, what it's fair to say is that it, it, it's a in a, as a allocation in the local plan, it, there isn't aren't any restrictions on it being a, a specific market as such. It's not a it's not a case where we're treating this as an exception to policy. Obviously, it's I think it's a positive of the application is this is, it is providing housing which is suitable for persons who are old, older. Um, uh, for older age groups, uh, the, the previous permit, basically the, the condition is carried over from the existing uh, planning permission, which remains valid. So I think, I think it, we are, by Im imposing the condition, we're trying to guide, um, provide guidance and certainty. But at the end of the day, it's, it's something that you know, we, if 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 they've proven to be a, a breach, we would have to address it at the time. But I, th I think the idea is to try to you know, encourage um, the uh, occupation by, the, uh, per by persons of 55 or uh, older. Um, but so I think at the end of the day, it's, there's only, there are some limitations to uh, how much that can be enforced. Are you happy with that, Councillor Chap? I'm, I'm actually not, Chair. I'm, I'm, I'm more confused than before. I mean, had this been a, a development which we're all aware of, like the Round Trees Trust, who we know how they operate with people who purchase properties, that it must be purchased back at an agreed price, none of that exists here. Um, as far as I can see, as soon as this is built, sold to the first tenant, complexities will get in, and solicitors will tell you that a solicitor can make a meal out of almost anything, um, and, and they, will, they will challenge whether or not that somebody else coming along can't buy a property in this area. I also see that we've, we've said that there's no affordable on site, because there's affordable elsewhere. This is due to 78 affordables being previously agreed. All right. I do think that um, there's a big risk here of it not being over 55s at some point, and I think that the, the risk should have been written out here so that members have the confidence to know that what we are passing is what will be there in 10, 15 and 20 years. I knew what was going to be in the Roundtree site and all the time because I knew the existence of what happens, but at this time I don't know that and I'm just very uncomfortable about doing this, but thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Jane Mortimer. Thank you. Um, I can understand Councillor Chats. There is going to be problems down the line. There always is, but this was an open market pre the previous planning didn't have anything on like that. This is a condition that has been put forward by the developers. Hang on. Uh, sorry. I don't... Uh, is that better? Yeah. Uh, has been put forward by the developers, and I think it is up to them to be able to sort something out when the, land, uh, the property is purchased. In fact, this actually helps if you... Uh, councillors were talking about the previous application that 
we need houses, we were looking, or came about about the, we're not actually increasing the borough only by seven, but there's more houses needed for older people. This is the more houses for older people, certainly around Eastfield, so that they can move out of larger houses into smaller houses. And that's something that we've been looking at for years. So I will second the motion, please, for uh, acceptance. Thank you. I think it seems to be between my mic and yours. If I turn it off, it seems to work better. So I'll have to remember to do that. Uh, Councillor Glenn Goodbury, you wanted to say something. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think this is excellent. I like the uh, different styles uh, on offer. And uh, listening to the speaker, I think it's great that uh, these, these homes, properties are there to cater for all eventualities as people get older and, and as their conditions deteriorate. And I think, it's, as Councillor Morton has already said, it will free up other properties for the market stock, you know, for the housing stock. And uh, I, I would welcome developments like this within the borough. I think it's an excellent idea. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Councillor John Nock. Thank you, Chairman. It, it, it's very easy to take offence when being referred to as a, a member of the older generation, uh, but I assure you I don't. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, this is a comment aimed... It, it's not a question, it's a comment aimed uh, specifically at uh, Lavelle Later Living, and uh, other developers who want to put uh, similar sites in place. Um, I noticed that the lady said that uh, uh, these places were, were, were designed with the 55-year-old age group plus in mind. What about the 75 and 80-year-olds uh, in mind? If I may suggest, it would do you no harm to employ a few of us uh, on a, a part-time cash only basis for a couple of afternoons a month to pitch in a few ideas as to the things we find we need as as time progresses just an observation chairman that's all thank you thank you for smiling at it anyway i think these houses are built with the idea of lifelong living for later time so there'll be sufficient adaptation for them to be uh, accommodating whatever age group comes after 55. Councillor Paul Riley. Yeah, I was, I was just waiting for Councillor Nock to sort of make the observation that they're all two-bedroom dwellings. I mean, it's, it's a really lovely development, an attractive, eclectic mix of properties, but they're fairly substantial two-bedroom dwellings. And I think we, your, your statistic was quite startling, mm -hmm. startling that we, we're building, I think, is it 450 homes a, a year? And the rest of the resident population actually static. I, I seem to recall as a, as a new council, we all get a manual, don't we? And it tells us mm. our population and the, and the demographics. And I think it told us that the population slightly reduced over the previous decade. And I think it said that uh, in the eight years up to 2025, the population was only actually going to increase by 370, but we're building all these housing units. I mean, I just, just, just an observation. I think lots of, lots of us, and I'm, I'm in the, uh, retirement bracket now and I'm, I'm, I'm single and most of the people I know are, are single. I mean, where, 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 where are the houses for in, you know, perhaps, perhaps in, in blocks of apartments for uh, single resi residents? I, I notice this is a, an extra care facility on the, on the, in, in the northern corner of the site and perhaps that's, that's the answer to that one. And I, I dare say Jazz Court, are, are, they, are they sort of single residency apartments? But uh, I, th I think there should be more... Uh, more, more accommodation for the smaller housing units. Thank you. Now I have a mover and a seconder. If there's nobody else wishing to comment, we'll move to the vote. Would you like to state the motion? Uh, thank you, Chair. So the motion before committee is as set out in the report that planning permission be granted. Thank you. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Yeah. Anyone against? One. No abstentions. No. Could you clarify the motion? Uh, thank you, Chair. So the resolution of the committee for item five is that planning permission be granted. Thank you. Thank you. We. Yeah. 
We'll just move. Are you? Who's presenting the next one? Yeah. Give me a chance. It's agenda item six. And Mr. Metfark, Mr. Metfark will present. I'll flee the terrace in Whitby. Uh, and the proposal is for uh, a development uh, for a, a three and a half story building to accommodate eight flats. The, the building is proposed to be sited on the uh, site of fire, a terrace of five former dwellings that were demolished shortly after the 2012 uh, landslip. Um, what I intend to do is uh, just run through the site, uh, then look at the proposal and then uh, speak a bit about the officer's assessment of the merits of the scheme. So this is an aerial photograph of the site. Uh, and you can see there this vacant piece of land and it's on the east side of the uh, harbour. If, just by way of context, there's Great Lane here and the uh, car park opposite the, the, the public house in, in this area. This is a site as it exists, so just simply shows a, a, a vacant piece of, piece of land. So this is a view from, uh, I presume, Key Road, to, uh, taken by the applicant, forms part of the design and access statement. This is the terrace as it existed uh, prior to demolition shortly after the uh, landslip. So the, the five terrace dwellings uh, that were demolished are outlined in, in red. So again, a photograph from Key Road. So, so this is the uh, uh, site as it stands now. So you can see this gap in the uh, Alfleda Terrace street scene and obviously members will be aware that this is one of the, the, the iconic views in, in Whitby. So obviously the, the conservation area uh, covers the, the vast majority of this and there's uh, many listed buildings in, in, the, in the vicinity of the application site of various grades and you have the abbey up, up on the headland and the other uh, listed buildings in, in, its, in its complex. So. A, a very sensitive site at the, the heart of the conservation area uh, and uh, forming one of the key views or, or vistas within, within the town. Another photograph from uh, the area of Key Road, this is uh, looking due east and that's with uh, the back, to, on my back to the, uh, uh, what is now the, the Star in Harbour or the former uh, tourist information building. So this is a photograph from the, the uh, applicant's design and access statement. So you can see that the purpose of including it is so you can see the, the, the gradient of the site. Uh, and uh, when you see it's conditioned there, uh, part way through the, the demolition process. And you can just see the sort of slope that development here has got to contend with. So this is a view to the south towards the uh, existing 20th century flat development and you can see the, the, vac the site vacant as it stands. And this is a view to the north, so the retained terrace dwelling, so those that weren't subject to, to demolition, you can see the site in, in the uh, foreground. So turning to the proposal then, so that this is the uh, a roof plan of the, of the proposed building so it's to fit between the uh, uh, Frank's Terrace and the uh, existing cottages. And this is the building in elevation form so you can see it's uh, a, th well, a three and a half stroke four storey building with basement so this is the west facing elevation so the elevation that you'll see uh, in that key harbour view and uh, this is the elevation, the other side, so they are flee the terrace side. So that's the view you'll see uh, on, on the way, uh, as you make your way down from the abbey, 
to, down the steps to the uh, well to, towards the spring bridge, swing bridge on, on the the, the harbour. So uh, very different building depending on which which side which side you you're, you're looking at. It's just a simple cross section um, and the, the the floor plans, which you can't really see a great deal of detail in here. But in it, it, eight apartments, two one bed, uh, six six two bed. And this is a, an artist's impression supplied by the uh, applicant's agent. And the building in question is shown, is sketched, is, is under the, the red star that I've added to it. So this is how the applicant suggests it, it would look in that key view. Turning to the merits of, of the scheme then, uh, and I'll just touch on two... two the report deals with the various issues, but I'll touch, touch on two of the key issues here, and that is design and impact on the character and appearance of the conservation area, and also uh, highways impact. Now, members will be aware policy DC1 of the local plan uh, requires that new development respects the form, scale, and massing of the uh, and pattern of surrounding development and policy DC5 of the local plan reflects the statutory test in that uh, it stipulates that development should either preserve or enhance the character and appearance of the conservation area. Now, turn to the, uh, this western elevation of the building and holding in mind how prominent that will be in that key view ac across the harbour. Um, your officer's view is that it will form uh, unfortunately, an, an incongruously bulky and monoth monolithic addition to the historic environment that will harm the character and appearance of the, cons of the cons conservation area, together with important views and vistas within the town, uh, particularly across the harbour. I think that the couple of things to note that doesn't necessarily pop out of the elevation drawing, just how much glass there is in this elevation and, and, and how at odds that is with the prevailing character of, of the locality. Um, so you, you can see there's also balconies projecting from these windows as well. So the, the, so the majority of, of windows, the arrangement of fenestration uh, on, uh, the, on the majority of buildings round about are more akin to what's on, the, uh, on this this elevation here, so quite unlike what's what's shown here. The, and, and another key issue is is that of um, highways. Uh, so that the local highway authority, as you've seen from from your papers, has objected to the scheme on the basis that there was five dwellings uh, in on this site previously, and the proposal is now for. Eight, and that net increase of three units will have an unacceptable impact in terms of demand for parking in, in the locality. Um, as many members will be f familiar, that is already a problem in, uh, around this site, particularly on the, on the ropery. Uh, so so there's, obviously there's no off-site, off-street parking for this development, all buildings roundabout, uh, so that that further three units would put undue pressure on free on-street parking in, in the locality to the detriment of highway safety. Um, so with those factors in mind, notably impacts, design and impacts, not, uh, uh, design and impacts on the conservation area, holding in mind that west elevation, its view, its impact on those very, uh, on those iconic vistas and the uh, its scale and arrangement of fenestration that, uh, that's at odds with what's what's roundabout of architecture becomes more humble as you move up this moves up move up the slope from the front. Um, so this is really could, would form quite an alien feature. So holding those that factor in mind, and also the the, the impact on the highway, uh, your officers are recommending that uh, consent be refused as uh, as said as as for the reasons I set out in the report. Thank you, Chair.
Thank you. We have a public of three minutes, and when there's one minute left, you will be informed that there's one minute left, and please bring your comments to a close when the three minutes are up. You can begin when you wish. The clock will start when you start speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I've been involved with this since the day it happened, 10 years. I'm not the agent. I was the specialist contractor brought in. This is just part of a 10-year project, is getting the planning permission. I haven't got time in three minutes to explain the subtleties involved and the agreements made with councils that are no longer here anymore. So, um, thanks for letting me speak. I'll try and talk very quickly. Uh, following the withdrawal of the previous application scheme that was commissioned, I took the advice of the Council's Conservation Officer, Stephen Gandalfi, and commissioned Purcell Architecture. They are nationally respected specialists in heritage and design with the historic environment. Their brief was to develop a new design proposal that responded to the previous scheme criticisms. Purcell consulted through a pre-application process with Stephen, Stephen Gandalfi and Senior Officer Karen Lawton, who also consulted with Area Planning Manager Marcus Whitmore in the development of a new design proposal for the development. This took into consideration the planning and heritage policies of the development as raised by the Council's planning team. I've got here uh, an email from Stephen Gandalfi, dated the uh, 26th of November. He says, in my opinion, the concepts shown draw inspiration from the positive characteristics of the conservation area and the new buildings would stand respectful in the area while still invoking architectural interest in their own right. Karen Lawton, the senior planner, in her email of the 21st of January, goes on to say, Stephen is positive about the scheme. I can see from the emails that he did respond briefly with regard to the concept proposal. Both myself and my colleague, Marcus Whitmore, are also supportive of the draft information provided as part of the pre-application planning process. I note that the concept proposal's appendix, that an alternative West elevation detail is provided, but our preference is for the initial concept including the Dutch style gable. She goes on to mention the proposal as seen on the harbour sketch looks to fit comfortably into the roof scape and between the existing and differing architectural styles present along the terrace. As demonstrated within the concept document there is a wide range of roof designs, wall finishes, windows, balconies within the locality. The advice we received from three long-standing senior experienced officials of the council was in support of the design and heritage aspects of the proposed development, the scale and massing, the design character with respect to the surroundings, the fenestration and the response to the heritage and historic setting. Only on the basis of this support and following the further advice from Karen Lawton, the planning application was submitted this January. Unfortunately, all three previous officers have since left Scarborough borough earlier this year. The pre-application discussions of advice was not taken into consideration by the standing case officer. Could Matt you bring Danforth. your comments to a close please? Hmm? Could you bring your comments to a close? And his recommendation to the committee is in disagreement with the advice previously given by the highly respected former officers. It should be noted that several months have elapsed between the planning submission and now it was regrettable that this did not make any uh, that the officer did not make any effort to engage our consult collaborative, collaborative process and all officers have failed to request an extension of time during the application period thank you very much your three minutes are over uh, i know there's a lot to say sometimes it can't be done so questions councillor knock Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I can be profane in three languages, and I'll need all of them extensively to express my contempt for this application. It is preposterous. It is motivated by greed. It runs against all our policies. It runs against all our reason. The parking up there at the moment is bad. It has not been helped at all when three five properties fell down, to put eight up there will make life almost intolerable for people who live there. It will have a grossly adverse impact on the surroundings, uh, the, uh, the, the, the 
the neighbourhood and the town in general. This should be thrown away with great effort. Thank, Thank you. you, Chairman. I would ask everybody to keep, uh, not go too deeply into people's motivations. Uh, I'm sure they're from the best intentions. Uh, I have Councillor Glenn Goodbury. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm pleased that the officers have, have uh, come up with their conclusion. Um, I have friends who live up on the ropery, and we all know the problems that Green Lane has at the moment with traffic going up down there. It is an absolute nightmare. It's vastly overcrowded, and for me, this just does not sit in with the east side scene. You know, the traditional cottages, um, terraced or otherwise, um, paint a, a lovely picture. I don't feel this fits in. Um, maybe somewhere else, but not on the east side of uh, Whitby. Um, obviously, concerns about the land uh, that it's proposed to be built on. Built on. Um, what happened last time with the land slip. So I'm supportive of the officer's um, decision and uh, I'd be happy to move it. Thank you. Councillor Stuart Campbell. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a question regarding the uh, land stability paragraph at 7.29. Um, it, it says that um, the, any uh, remedy work um, would be uh, incumbent on the applicant um, and that the uh, council's engineers uh, advise that the site is currently generally generally safe ha has in the uh, 10 years since the previous uh, buildings uh, collapsed has there been any remedial work done to that slope because that slope collapsed because of where well, all the decking went down, but the actual buildings remained in place and had to be uh, demolished. So it, uh, the area in front of where, where it was is no longer there because that went, that disappeared down at the bottom of the hill. Thank you, would you like to comment on that? Thank you, Chair. Uh, my understanding is that the, the land has been comprehensively stabilized. Um, and that, that, the, that the advice that we have from our engineers who are the experts on that particular matter is that uh, this, this case could, that, that this could go ahead without compro compromising safety. That's, that's the best as I, I can give, Chair. Thank you. I know Roberta, Councillor Roberta Swai has asked to be speaking, but I'd like uh, Councillor Mike Cockrell to say first, because you may have to leave at half past two, I believe. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, although living in Filey, I do know that area very, very well, having spent a quite a few days and nights up there during the actual landslide event. And I would totally agree with the recommendation of the officers, and I would so move. Thank you. Councillor Roberta Swires. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, it's in the wrong place, obviously, definitely. It's, it doesn't sit well, it doesn't look well. It, it may have been well thought out, but whatever anybody says, it's obviously the stability. The lot. You know, I mean, we, we, we couldn't have any major problems again. It's got to be the, the officers, we've looked over a 10 year period. If, if not much has been done to stay, this is never going to work. Um, I, I don't think the building is particularly eye catching. I think when you're looking over that, as you say on old photographs, I mean, I know it be quite well, but I think the one thing that overrides all this that I'm saying, it, it, forget the building if it was someone else, somewhere else. The fact is, the infrastructure, the roads around it, there's no way they can accommodate the traffic that would come from this, this, uh, this development. And I would go with the officer's refu refusal. Um, I will second the proposal. Councillor Jane Mortimer. Thank you. Funnily enough, I used to work on the ropery, and parking is a nightmare, was a nightmare even when I was working there 10, 12, 15 years ago. It is just not suitable for this quantity of development. Um, it sounds, I know a lot of work has been put into it, I know a lot of design work has been put into it but it doesn't reflect what is over there at the present time. It doesn't fit in. 
Um, maybe on the other side of Whitby, it would be superb and would do very well. Uh, on those two reasons, basically, the highways don't recommend refusal, and certainly for design for that area is another one that um, is another reason why I support the recommendation for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Will Forbes. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, am I right in thinking that the, un the only real problem here is, is the fact that it's, it, it's for more, it's a dwelling for more people to live in than was there previously? So am I correct in thinking that planning permission would have been granted if it was for the same number of dwellings as it was uh, before the landslip happened? Because other than that, I think it's just sort of, it, it's down to subjectivity as to whether it looks good enough or not. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I think um, a proposal for a like-for-like like proposal, so five in place of five, certainly from the, the uh, highways perspective, uh, might be something that the council could look upon more, more favourably. favorably. Um, uh, but that obviously, it, it, what we have in front of us is the proposal for, for, for eight. So, yeah, thank you, Chair. Councillor Bill Chart. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I was, I was, probably cost me a bit of sleep this one, actually, because I was thinking to myself, we've got a big hole where something once was and now there is nothing. Uh, listen to the applicant today, there's been a lot of work put in working with uh, officers of the council. Um, and listen to what he's saying, he's been given the encouragement uh, by words to say, yeah, great idea and whatever. And it is a statement piece, I've got to be honest with you, looking at it, it, it doesn't fit in, you are right. But a lot of things don't fit in. The corner calf don't fit in with nothing, you know what I mean? The, the, the Whitby Abbey actually doesn't fit in with anything either. So, I mean, it's not about what fits in and, and scoping and scheming and whatever, because if you look at that, it's on the same roof line. I just think that, yeah, it's a number. That's all it can be is the number, because I think had this just been for a like for like, we probably wouldn't have been having this conversation, it would have just been permitted. Mm -hmm. And I think that now with development and Whitby's need for housing, which is greater than anywhere else in the borough, I think to try and get a couple more units in there wasn't being greedy. It was trying to use the land in a positive way. I'm actually not against refusal of this. I, I, I would rather have passed it, but I won't be, I won't be agreeing to refuse it. Okay. Councillor Stuart Campbell. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I've also got concerns regarding the, uh, the parking issue. Um, the, the applicant has said that the expectation is people will use the Abbey car park. Uh, I, I used to actually stay in one of the hip built one of the properties that isn't is no longer there before I bought my house in Whitby. And I can tell you that there was absolutely no way we were going to be parking in Abbey Car Park when the ropery was um, th a third of the distance away. So, um, and knowing the people who used to uh, live in the other properties uh, there, uh, they, ne they never used to park up on the Abbey Car Park either. It was always, everybody always parked on the ropery. Um, so I, th I think the, the concerns of the highways regarding um, parking issues are very valid. And they, they had to be concerned regarding the stability of the slope. Thank you. Councillor Sam Cross. Would you like to put your mic on? Whistle back at me. Uh, it is a big problem parking in Whitby. And just really for clarification, these are eight holiday homes. Uh, and we're not looking at five affordable homes. It's eight holiday homes. I could understand if they were affordable or it was something that would be useful to the residents of Whitby. But unfortunately, you know, I think a lot of people would say there is enough holiday homes in Whitby. Uh, and we've seen the problems just recently with the recent vote from the people of Whitby with regard to that. And I don't think the people of Whitby really require this at the present time. Thank you, Chair. Would you clarify the holiday homes element of this? 
Yeah, uh, Councillor Cross, Cross is quite right in that the, if you read through the design and access statement, there is reference to them being uh, holiday homes. Um, they've sort of been advanced on that on that basis. However, the, the in the, in the uh, application form, it is a proposal for eight open market uh, dwellings. So that, that ultimately, that's that's what consent is. He sought for, and also if they got consent, it would be um, the applicant could uh, let them for holiday purposes if if they, they they saw fit. So perhaps that's a statement of intent in, in the in the design and access statement, rather than a fixed part of the proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Richmore. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I am concerned if we're uh, if if we're looking at refusing because of uh, whether or not things are holiday lets and if there's a, an underlying uh, agenda to that. For me, I actually think um, it looks ar architecturally sound. Um, I am a view to agree with the previous officers who, who said same. The geology, uh, I'm now confirmed, is sound also. It's purely the stresses on infrastructure once again and the area um, and with a view to parking. So it, for me, um, it, if it's just a little too large, if it's, gone, if it's gone to eight rather than five, I'd be sitting here right now absolutely with a view to, um, to agreeing, but the fact that it's a little, a little too large and it does impact on residents nearby, it's that infrastructure thing and where it's sited. But I'd like to just congratulate um, our, our uh, speaker over there because I actually think it does look sound from both sides. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to clarify previous uh, officers' comments? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, the council did offer pre-application ad advice, and the uh, the proposal. Uh, that favourable comments were offered on the basis of um, was it was of this ilk, but it, it wasn't quite the same. It, it was a, a two and a half storey building. Um, it was pre presented differently to, to uh, how it now appears is in, in, in the application. Thank you, Chair. I have a mover and I have a seconder. I would like to go to the vote if there's no other comments to be made. Could you clarify the motion? Sorry, yes. I noticed the applicant is shaking his head down there. Within the proposal, 1.1, it says, uh, consent for the direction of a building that would comprise eight holiday units, C3 use class, but with the conditional planning restricting limiting to their use to holiday letting. It's quite unequ unequivocal. It's all they're going to be, holiday lets. There's no argument about that. Thanks. Thank you. We'll move to the vote then. Could you clarify the motion? Thank you, Chair. So the motion before members is that uh, planning permission be refused for the two reasons set out in the report. Thank you. Right. We'll move to the vote. All those in favour of the motion as stated, please raise your hand. All those against? Any abstentions? No. Thank you very much. The motion is carried. Could you state it? Thank you, Chair. So for agenda item seven, uh, six, rather, the resolution of committee no. is to refuse planning permission. Councillor Mike Cockerell is leaving. He has a prior appointment. Thank you very much. Agenda item seven, planning application, residential home, five, six, Esplanade Gardens, Scarborough. Mr. Chadfield will present. Ah, thank you, Chair. The next item is the part change of use of the vacant nursing home, use class C2, to 10 residential flats, use class C3, at 5 to 6 Esplanade Gardens. 
Um, the site, uh, the proposal would primarily affects the site comprising number six Esplanade Gardens. Um, the site located here to the north is the uh, Prince Wales um, Registered Park Gardens, Grade Two listed, um, registered by the um, by Historic England. Um, the site is located in the designated conservation area of Scarborough. Um, the proposal would also look to replace the uh, fenestration to the front of the, the front elevation, um, comprising 20 windows to the front, including bay windows. There would be a, a sash window uh, conservation specification slim line, which would replace, replicate the existing detailing in the existing fenestration. The 10 residential flats would comprise two studio flats located at basement level and ground floor level, and they would be open to the holiday let market. The remaining eight residential flats would be open to the uh, open market for the re open rental market. The proposal forms, the, the site forms two parts. So on this photo, you can see number six Esplanade Gardens, which forms the, which is subject to the, to, to the planning consent. The uh, re remaining half of the, the site comprises the other half of the vacant um, nursing home, which has already received planning consent for eight uh, residential units. Um, it's the applicant's intention to eventually subdivide these uh, dwellings back to the original form. The previous consent uh, for eight residential flats also sought permission for a new door at number six. So you, you can see at the top of the staircase there on the right, there's a, a, an existing window which would have formed part of the, 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 um, the nursing, uh, nursing home. Uh, that will, uh, as, as part of the previous consent, that will now be a, another entrance uh, we'll be placed with a, a, a timber door to replicate the existing door at number five. The surrounding site uh, forms, it forms part of a, a five-story mid-terrace dwelling which uh, forms uh, part of the rest of the terrace down Esplanade Gardens. In terms of uh, the development principle policies, SH, uh, HC1 and HC2 of the local plan seek to support housing development uh, within the defined development limits of Scarborough. Uh, the proposed site lies within um, these development limits and as such uh, can be considered acceptable in principle, subject to favourable consideration of the other planning merits. Um, the uh, proposal, again, seeks to replace the existing timber frame windows with a high quality UPVC frame, similar to uh, previously approved uh, windows by the committee. Uh, these would replicate the existing frames in terms of design and detail um, and the previous um, specifications were approved at number five, Esplanade Gardens, the adjoining um, half of the property. Um, the, there would be no affordable housing as part of the um, provision as the site is vacant and therefore benefits from vacant building credits. Um, there's no net developable area on the site and therefore um, no affordable housing contribution would be required. Uh, the adjoining property for eight residential um, flats was previously approved. Um, the uh, adjoining property uh, subject to subject to committee today um, is to be uh, delegated by committee as it exceeds the threshold or meets the threshold for 10 residential, for, uh, development for 10 residential units. Um, the proposal, uh, there would also be amenity space to the rear of the site, um, which would cater for bin storage and uh, bicycle storage up to 10 bicycles. Um, the proposal would not result in any significant external development to the site. 
Um, it's therefore considered that it wouldn't have an adverse impact on the site um, or the residential amenities of neighbouring properties. Um, it's also considered that the proposed windows would not result in an adverse impact on the character of the conservation area um, and is therefore recommended for approval subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. So, questions first. Is there any questions? Councillor Bill Chan. So, Chair, can I get this right? So, the building next door, which was the same building, has now got permission for five flats. Eight. It's got eight. Eight. And then this one has permission as well. It, it's seeking permission for 10. See, right, so that would be 18 flats, and not one. so we won't achieve any affordable out of this because they've split them up. It's, it's, a, it's a vacant building, so it benefits from vacant building, uh, vacant building credits, um, which is a, an incentive uh, from the government to develop uh, or bring forward residential development on brownfield sites. The only way uh, 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 how that will work is if, if they were to provide a contribution was if, is if the net area, floor area, would be greater than the existing floor area. So in the instance of, say, um, a demolished mill, for example, if they were to demolish the mill and then uh, develop a, an external, um, a de a, an additional floor, for example, onto the new building, then they would contribute affordable housing because it would be a net developable, uh, a net gain in terms of floor space. But because there's no external development, in addition to the existing state, then there's no um, obligation in terms of affordable housing. Okay. So, 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 Chair, we're going back. We're not going forward. That's the problem. I remember when we used to get applications in that two developers would do, and I won't mention them, right? One would put them on one site, and one would put this other site, and they would both develop at the same time. Um, I also see here at 4-4 four, four of the report, bedroom one appears to have no windows. Have I got the right one? Yes. I have got the right one. Yeah, no windows. It's 4-4, four, four, environmental uh, section, the following suggestions have been made. You got that? Yes. All right. So, so, so if we pass this, then we would be passing a substandard room to be used? Amended plans have been received. And to, to include that, uh, to include that window, you'll have to apologise if if that's not present on this on this plan. Okay. But amended plans have been received to increase okay. to include a window. Um, I mean, I'm only reading the report. No, 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 absolutely no. So, so, so we're going to end up with all these units on a road which is really busy. We've just turned one down for being on a road which was really busy and would add three cars to the same sort of environment, now we're adding 18 residentials, potential two in each flat, 36 cars, right, to a very busy road, and, and we're saying this is all right. I just, I just, consistency seems to be my bother. Thank you, Chair. Mr Walker, would you like to Yeah, I mean, just to, just to draw to members' attention the distinction, in the, the previous application, the Highways Authority formally objected in this instance, whilst they've said this will add additional strain they have fundamentally not objected to the application so that's the there is a, a difference in position from the statutory consultee Thank you, Chair. Uh, and just to remind everybody when it was the nursing home there would have been people visiting and parking their cars as well thank you i have uh, councillor richmore thank you chair um i've just got to ask a question with regards to um the back lane there, I know that area quite well. I've, uh, I've kept it tidy with me litter pickers in the past. Um, it's laced with wheelie bins. Now, if there are storage areas, and if this is built into this as a plan, um, whether or not it's built into both sides or what have you, but as Councillor Chats just um, mentioned there, we're looking perhaps at 36 um, uh, bins going out, one for each, uh, you know, recycling, what have you. Is there enough st space and is there something that can be made uh, the built into this that, that that actually happens? Because one of the main things that comes to my email box is people don't put their bins in their areas where they're, they're designated. They line the, um, the, the back lanes of which this is a very narrow one. 
And um, lo and behold, you just have a permanent area of bins. And if there's 36 bins to go along out of the back of this, as opposed to when it was a care home, I'm expecting they may have had one or two of the commercial size bins and they would have been in charge of all those bins and kept them on the site. Um, how, do we get, how do we make sure, how do we implement um, such a line where if the storage area for these bins on site, all, all bins have to be kept on there until the night before they're put out? because um, my fears and my past experiences is that they'll just line that back, that back line permanently. Is there anything in the management plan which will regulate the bin taking out and coming back in? The, uh, I've got in touch with the agent earlier on this week and they have confirmed that in terms of the, um, uh, the residential uh, rental holiday, uh, sorry, the rental market flats, which will have rentals, um, local rentals in them, um, they'll have, uh, th they've considered that there's sufficient space within the immediate space to the rear to have the appropriate number of storage bins. So they're not anticipating that there'll be a significant increase in the existing storage bins. In terms of the studio flats at ground floor and basement floor level, um, so the initial concern is that um, as a holiday rental, you would not um, seek to take out the bins yourself, so they've confirmed that a contract, an external contract and cleaner will be coming in to dispose of those, um, uh, those wa that waste disposal themselves. Um, so, uh, uh, aside from that, um, Environmental Health have, all been have also been consulted again, and they've confirmed that they've got no objections from a, bin, uh, a waste disposal um, aspect. Um, but in terms of the... Um, the kind of accumulation of bins, judging from the plans and the confirmation from the agent, they're only looking at um, seeking a request for bins that occupy um, the, the amenity space to the rear. So in terms of um, prospective 36 bins um, being, being part of it, it's not included, it's not been demonstrated in the plans, it's been confirmed by the agent that they're not seeking to kind of have an increase in the number of bins outside of the amenity space that's present. Councillor Richmore, if you don't mind. So for clarification, the space that's integral, that's built into that property on, 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 the, on the, the floor plan, that is sufficient to hold two bins for every flat proposed. And they're going to be kept on there until the evening before they're due to be, co due to be collected by, uh, by whoever it is that, that is going to be employed to, to empty them. Because I have, I'm experienced in this, and it, it, it doesn't happen. And it's one of the biggest parts of casework that I have to do in that world, is, is deal with bins that don't get put away, or there's just not enough space on the floor pan to hold the amount of bins. Because these properties often were designed as mansions for one or two or a family to live in. it, And now they're dealing with 36 bins, and, and, and I haven't got... I can't see what the space is. I mean, I haven't got the dimensions here. I've tried to find them. Of, of, yeah. In, in, yeah, and, and that space is enough for 36 bins or what have you. No. I don't think the issue is whether they can accommodate the bins. The issue is, will somebody be responsible for taking them out and bringing them back in? That's the real issue. And I think there's enough space to do it. Is there anything in there to lead us to conclude that that will happen? What we have is correspondence from the agents to stipulate that there will be an external contractor for the holiday lets to um, vi be visited to the site when holiday, um, holiday makers are in those studio flats to the lower ground and basement levels. Um, Aside from that, it's dependent on the inhabitants of the um, flats in the rentals to dispose of that waste themselves. So, it's it's um, in terms of in terms of the arrangements of the, the waste disposal, we, we wouldn't consider it any worse than the existing internal arrangement or the existing arrangements that are um, made by surrounding residential and uh, non-residential properties in the area. Right. Next person I have is Councillor Jane Mortimer. Thank you. Funnily enough, I was going to ask about bins as well. Um, I really don't understand where the 36 comes from because there's only, what, 10 flats? So even if you have two per flat, you're going to have... 
And it isn't going to be the other two because they're going to be emptied anyway by the sound of it. So you've got nearly 20. So what about commercial bins? Uh, uh, I don't know whether it should be con conditioned because it all depends. Environmental health service that yard. Do they send a big bin lorry down or a small one? I don't know. But if they've got no objections to it, but I can understand where Councillor Law is coming from, it's where it's coming from, because I was going to ask about bins as well. Um, because if you live in, a, in flats, it's to ensure that you use the correct bins for the correct thing. It would probably be a mini one that goes down there. I, d I don't know. But maybe the bigger bins can't be picked up from there. Uh, I think if they haven't made any comment on it, it means that it's okay, but maybe something should be put on as a note to say that how the bin store, how the area at the back is used for bins is essential to, to ensure that they're put in place and used properly. Uh, how you do it, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking you as officers. Can some informative be put on that bin, somebody is made responsible to take the bins out and to make sure the bins come in, uh, back into the space? We can put an informative on there as a remark, as a as, as a remind in, in terms of following up from recent correspondence. Um, we remind them of the responsibility of the ownership and the management of that of that site um, in terms of waste disposal. But that ultimately they have the responsibility to ensure the safe and secure waste disposal of um, of, of, of bins and waste on that site. Um, and, 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 and as the uh, council has previously said, ultimately environmental health haven't raised an objection, even mm. following up on, on a, an initial concern. Um, so we, we, can, we, can, we can certainly put an informative to remind them of their obligations as management of, of that site um, and, and to kind of get that message across to them. Councillor Sam Cross. Thank you. Just to remind everybody, we've just had a conversation earlier that the occupancy level in each individual unit is less than two. So the likelihood of it being much greater than that is what you can suggest.
Thank you. Mr. Walker. Sorry, it was just that it, 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 it was kind of before, before Councillor Cross was more kind of in principle kind of comments on the application. It was just to do with the, the, the bin issue, and it was just to offer up the potential if members were so minded, we could, we could choose to defer the matter and we could have further dialogue with both environmental health and the um, applicant just to try and ascertain whether there's some sort of more nuanced approach in this instance that could be made to address those direct issues. But I appreciate that, you know, Council Cross has obviously expanded the concerns there, so. Councillor Sam, do you want to come back on that? Thank you. Thank you yeah. I have Councillor Will Forbes, John Nock, Roberta Swires and Clive Pearson. I'll take them in that order. Councillor Will Forbes. Uh, thank you. Um, as far as the bins go, is, is there anywhere we can sort of uh, just like allocate some commercial bins to it, uh, to the actual um, application? Because uh, I think that would deal with a lot of the problems there. Um, if they can be fitted around the back. Because uh, I mean, the, the, the bin situation is—it's—it's—it's it's, it's a wider problem across the whole of Scarborough. There's, there's wheelie bins everywhere. I'm sure there's more wheelie bins than people, but um, especially where I live, there's eight in my building alone, and it's not even a very big, like, block of flats. Um, but yeah, it, I, I mean, to be honest, yeah, commercial bins should be more widely used around Scarborough as it is. Um, aside from that, uh, the. Um, do you know how, how many flats were in this building before it was a nursing home? So we can sort of gauge that as, as to whether like 10 is an overdevelopment there. Yeah, um, I don't. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, just one more thing as well. Um, uh, yeah, I was going to say I'm happy to see that the front door would be put back into place rather than have, having steps go up to a window, which is just silly. Thank you. I um, don't have the um, internal arrangement of the flats before they were a care home. My understanding is that the care home uh, or the vacant care home has been um, in that use for, for several years. So, but it's, it's something we could um, inquire with the with the agent and the, the applicant about and uh, kind of get that uh, clarification on that internal layout if that's beneficial. What about the bins? Can we actually uh, put in a request that they be commercial bins? <sighs> Yeah, Mr. Walker, if you'd like to. Yeah, I think we, I guess, partly my suggestion that possibly deferral yeah. to a label discussion, because obviously environmental health administer the kind of, uh, sort of waste collection um, facilities. And I'd, I'd, I'd be hesitant to kind of effectively, without knowing the ins and outs of their particular policies and responsibilities to, to impose that might, might, I think we need to understand whether we had that latitude yeah. to do so with them and... Uh, but as I say, we're, we're happy to, to do that if committees yeah. sort of minded. I have Councillor John Nock, Roberta Swise, and Clive Pearce. I would welcome any motion to defer coming along. Councillor John Nock. Thank, thank, thank you, Chairman. This, uh, um, this is going to be uh, quite an, an unpleasant, uncomfortable, tight little environment in which to live. Um, small rooms, uh, small windows. Uh, what happened to the better lives? better homes concept that we had. Uh, as, regarding, as, as far as the bins are concerned, community harmony depends upon uh, uh, people doing the right thing, and you can't enforce that. So I, I, I move, therefore, Chairman, that we defer a decision on this pending further consultation and uh, a site visit if, uh, if, if, if that is deemed appropriate, but certainly further consultation with uh, relevant parties and agencies. Thank you. Councillor Roberta Swires. Thank you, Chairman. I was going to propose that we defer, so I will second that. I will, on, on that, I will just say, yeah, the better life, the healthier life. I know that area really well. That passage is very narrow. 
for manoeuvrability with the uh, the bin wagon going down even. But I can say, I know it's been a, a nursing home, God, 40 odd years probably. You will have had commercial bins there, but this is actually bringing in an awful lot of holiday homes where people are just going to, they're not going to bother putting these bins back. They're just going to be, I know exactly what you mean. The Keep Scarborough Tidy Man often talks about these passageways being an absolute eyesore for litter. We don't want that up that area. That is a beautiful area, and I think that's the last thing we want. I think Mr Walker's suggestion of deferring it and going back to the agencies, back to everyone, having another talk round it and seeing if there is... Because what we don't want, we can't promote these... These, these flats that are shocking, really. We wouldn't want our family... Well, I certainly wouldn't want to be in a flat that mm. is well below standard, very little sunlight. We shouldn't be progressing with these things. But I think it needs further consultation, so I will second Councillor Knox's deferment of it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Clive Pearson, you indicated you wanted to speak. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to support everything... Councillor uh, Cross was saying. But the other thing I would notice was the windows. And it says they're going to be replaced by high quality double glazed UPVC windows. And it says refer to design and quality leaflet. On that, it doesn't show what design they are at all. It doesn't give any uh, design of the what it would look like. Uh, also, the only thing it does show is They've got sills on. This building has uh, stone sills. They wouldn't have sills on them. Mm. So the design, to me, is wrong. It's, it's not as it should be. And I was just wondering what your thoughts on that are. Thank you. So the um, proposal for the windows, they've stipulated that there would be a, a high-quality uh, conservation-style window. Um, the... The, this particular design would replicate the existing detail and form of the existing window. So the aim is to, to match the um, existing quality as, as best as possible as the existing windows and to allow the same amount of light that the existing windows provide. Um, the, the other thing to say as well is that this particular specification was also approved at the adjacent, um, at, at the adjacent building. So it, uh, that if we were to approve a different specification of window, that would result in a mismatching of windows with the, um, the ultimate aim to subdivide those two buildings into separate dwellings. So um, that's what I would um, say to, to, to that, but we, um, but we can also request a um, specific, specific detail from the, from the ap applicant to stipulate exactly the, the specification and um, sill that they'll be looking to in install in, yeah. the, in the frontage of the building. Just for clarification, when you refer to this other specification, is that something that's already in situ, which we can go and have a look at, or is this the one building which has the eight flats? This is the one building that has eight flats, so they've so not yet... They've not done it yet. We can't see what it's going to look like. They've not yet uh, um, begun development on that site as of yet. Thank you. Can I just come back? The only thing is, if we pass that, and it's got that design, and it's not what I would call a design. It's not shown as a design. It's not what I would say I would pass. But I'm, a, I'm allowing it because it's showing that it ha could, could have sills and they could just go and say, oh, blow it, we're going to put sills on these. Or, oh, blow me, it's just come with a sill on. Can't take a sill off of a UPV window. So that's my thoughts. It, it's got to be what we want and not what... And it's not stating on there exactly what it is. Mr. Walker. Yeah, I mean, again, I guess we've, we, 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 we've had the motion to defer. We can explore that in more detail if, if, if members are minded to, to, to hold an abeyance of decision for this committee. I have a motion to defer, moved and seconded. Uh, we'll go to the vote. Oh, hold on. Yes, Mr. Cross, Councillor Cross. Uh, you know, and how can you decide whether a window is high quality 
I think mine came from MFI, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Will Forbes. Um, yeah, just the sash window uh, situation. Um, there is there's some near where I live where they've kept the old sash window in and then just put, uh, put the new U UPVC, um, the better energy efficiency one behind it. So it, it didn't result in them having to pull out the old the old sash window, and uh, you know, maybe that's something we can consider for this. Thank you. We have a motion to defer, moved and seconded. We shall now move to the vote. Would you like to clarify the motion? Oh. State the motion. Yes. <laughs> motion is to defer the decision for this committee. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favour, please raise your hand. I think that's unanimous. Thank you. That brings us to the. Uh, would you like to state the motion just Sorry, for this? No. For agenda item seven, the decision is deferred. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our agenda. No, Thank no. you very much. Oh, no. Agenda, no. Oh, sorry. Agenda I haven't got it on here. Yeah. Oh, that. I'd never turned it over. It's been always a problem with me. Agenda item eight, designation of a neighbourhood development plan area. Mr Walker to present. Thank you, Chair. I'll try and be very brief for this one. Uh, you'll, you'll recall that for some years now there has been the potential for town and parish councils to commit to undertaking, uh, undertaking neighbourhood plans that, if seen through to fruition, can form part of the development plan in a, in a particular area and effectively have status in making planning decisions. Uh, we've recently received a request from Newby and Scolby Town Council, as they are now, um, indicating that they wish to, uh, to, to prepare a, a neighbourhood plan. Um, the area they intend to cover, or the, the end of area they've indicated, is the entire uh, parish area, the town council area, and therefore uh, it's a, hopefully a fairly straightforward decision. We just need committee to effectively agree that they are an appropriate authority and that the geography makes sense, and then it, it, it would essentially be over to them to... to carry out the, the work and, and, and prepare a plan. Thank you. Thank you. I was actually at the meeting where this was discussed and brought forward, and I welcomed it then as a way for communities to gain a better control of the area and put an input in. So, Councillor Sam Cross, would you like to say something? Yeah. I'd like to propose it, Chairman. Uh, Councillor John Nock is seconding it. Uh, anybody else wishes to say anything? No. Shall we move to the vote? Would you like to state the motion? Uh, yeah, that, uh, uh, the motion is to uh, accept the designation of the neighbourhood development plan area as submitted by the Town Council. All those in favour? That's unanimous as well. Could you state? The Thank you. So just for committee's information, uh, this resolution will be reported on to the relevant portfolio holder who will then um, with it, it will be recommended to, to her, which is Councillor Collings, that we, we sanction the, the work to be undertaken. Thank you. That definitely brings us to the end of the agenda. Thank you very much for your presence and have a safe journey home. Good night.